So today is the second week of our Growing Together in Faith campaign, and today, obviously, we're focused on our ministry, the work that God has given this church and given really every church to do. And the work of ministry goes back to the commissioning that Jesus gave his disciples themselves when he sent them out into the world. So let's, uh, let's begin with a prayer. God, we're grateful for all that you've done. We're grateful for the way that you're at work. We're grateful for your power in our lives. We're grateful for your power in the church and for the commission that you've given us, for the sending uh, that you've given us. And in everything, we're just grateful that you've called us by name, that you've called us your people. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So today the message is pretty simple. If I could preach it using only verbs, I would. Uh, verbs are good things in sermons because verbs are uh, more important, really, than talk or thought or even belief. The Christian life should be marked instead by faith that's in action. And that's what we find in the letter of James. We find this idea that faith without works is dead. And that's why when we talk about our mission statement, uh, and you see that on the front of the bulletin every, every week, love God, serve people, transform lives. Well, we shorten it using only the verbs put at the back of the sanctuary as you go out into the world. So today, the banner parade gives us a little bit of a glimpse of all the dimensions of our ministry. And as you saw just in the number of banners and in all the various activities that are on those banners, we do a lot of things. And later on, you'll have the opportunity to see um, the impact of these ministries, the transformative impact of these ministries that uh, will be told in the, uh, in the words of people who've been affected by what we do here. Now, in the broader culture, if you were to be on any sort of a Christian website, as I often obviously find myself, and look through the comments, you find uh, people kind of trolling those websites and, and wanting to bring up every negative thing that you can imagine about the church. And one of the criticisms that you often find is churches don't do anything. What's the point? In other words, we exist as corporations, we exist as edifices in the town, and uh, you note those names, or those nouns, I should say corporations, right, edifices, buildings. But people don't see us as agents of change in the communities where we are. What people want to see are the verbs. They want to see that there's some action behind what it is that we say we believe and what it is that we say we're about. They want to see things like food drives and disaster relief. They want to see blood drives and winter clothing collections and Christmas gifts for the poor and people housing the homeless all of which are things that we do, by the way, you'll find as part of the ministry of this church. What people on the outside sometimes fail to recognize and appreciate about the church is the significant part of our work, and perhaps the most significant part of our work actually is internal work. It's what we do inside people. We're about the transformation of people's lives from the inside out. So restoring hope and modeling forgiveness, and teaching unconditional love, helping people to find their vocation and their calling in life, instructing people in Jesus' way of living. Now that's a much harder thing for us to measure, but it happens here too. Much of the work, uh, much of that particular work takes place right here in this space and also in Boker Hall, week by week. As we come together in worship, we come to hear the word, we come to pray, we come to sing, we come to offer our concerns and cares for the world. It also happens in small groups when we study scripture together, we pray together. We started nine small groups just this fall, nine new ones. Because we have the opportunity to gather together, to learn, to grow, to pray together, to be in mission together. People on the outside might not get how this internal work enables us to go out and do the external work. But we get it because we've seen it. We've seen how this coming together week by week by week, how it affects us, how it changes us, how it transforms us. We get it because being part of this congregation, we know that knowing Jesus better through the people who are gathered here in this place right now has made a huge difference for us in our lives. So let me show you my great revelation as I was going through uh, the text from Luke this week. Do you have that? Great, thank you. So 
As I was looking at Luke chapter 9, verses 1 and 2, the thing that really jumped out to me were these five verbs in these two verses. It seemed to me that these kind of could be talked about as a universal way of describing the work of the church. And what it says is, Jesus called, called, the twelve together and gave them power and authority over all demons and to cure diseases. And he sent them out to proclaim the kingdom of God and to heal. So those five verbs, call, gave, sent, proclaim, heal. These two verses and these five verbs summarize, I believe, very well what it is that we're about. Jesus calls us together, calls us out of the world into a place where we can be given something that's new, where we can be given new life, where we can be given authority to go back out and do work on his behalf. He gives us what's necessary to be about this work. And so that's this internal process. What happens on the left side of the page is this internal process that I'm talking about, where we're changed. And then when we're gathering around Jesus and his teaching, just as the disciples did, we learn and we grow and we receive all that we need in order to live out our faith. Now from there, the next step is that we are sent. And so that's why it's important, for example, to have these words above the door so that when we are sent, we're reminded what we are sent to do. We're sent to proclaim the kingdom of God. That is to say, we're sent to proclaim what it is that God is doing. Because that's what the kingdom of God is. It means God's activity here on earth right now. God's activity right here among us. Not only what will happen out there in the future when Jesus returns, but what's happening right now. What God is doing all around us. To proclaim that. To talk about it in our life, in the lives of people that we know, in the community. And to heal those who are hurting healing. That's all that Jesus gave them to do, to proclaim and to heal. Those two things. Five verbs. I love it because it's so simple. And I love it because it shows you both this internal work and this external work. What Jesus does inside us allows us to go out and be able to do for others. That's why the apostles, in fact, were called the apostles. You know what apostle means? It means one who is sent one who is sent. So that verb sent is important when we talk about how a building enables us to do what it is that we're called to do. Buildings are home bases from which we are called, into which we are called, and then from which we are sent. So if you read the Gospels, it's clear that Jesus' home base was the synagogue. Very, uh, several times talked about Jesus as was his custom, was in the synagogue at certain, uh, uh, on a certain day of the week, obviously the Sabbath day. And each time he's in the Sabbath, he's gathered with the people, he's encouraged, he's strengthened, and then he goes out to do the work. Much of Jesus' work was done on the Sabbath. And that's one of the reasons why he got himself into so much trouble. Whenever you read about Paul, the first place that he went when he came into a new town was he came together with people in a synagogue and began to talk to them about Jesus. Now, as Christians were uh, not accepted in the synagogue, over time what happened was Christians began to gather in people's homes. And from there, as uh, communities of faith got bigger, then they began to build churches. And every time Christians were sent out from those places, in order to proclaim what God was doing and to heal the hurts of people, to heal them physically, to heal them emotionally, to heal them spiritually, just as the disciples did. So we have a need here in facilities where we're going to be called in and called out to have uh, flexibility. So one of the things that you'll see in the new building that we're talking about here, the design that we've been working on, is it's got a great deal of flexibility. So. We're talking about a space that will accommodate us for worship. It will accommodate us for dinners. It will accommodate us for concerts and plays and mission and community events. It can accommodate really anything that we want to do there. And as we've worked to refine the plan for the first floor, 
then we've again make, made every effort to make that space just as flexible as possible. So we're planning uh, showers for times when we have to host people overnight. I would love to see us, for example, not only to host the homeless, but also to be able to accommodate people if there's a disaster, or maybe even to house mission teams who come into the area, maybe to work either in Camden or Trenton or maybe at the shore. I'd love to be able to see us be in that kind of work. So we've planned some spaces that, are, um, that have fixed partitions so that we can give people you know, their own space. We have other places where you can throw open several partitions and all of a sudden you can have a giant room that's you know, 60, 80 feet long. So we're doing all that we can to ensure that whatever ministry we're called to do, either now or in the future, will fit into this space and that we'll be ready for. I've been telling the team that's been working on this campaign that we're not so much um, doing a campaign about the building. I mean, a building is a great tool, and you could say a building is a great noun, but ultimately what we're doing is not about nouns, it's about verbs. What's really important is what we're going to do in the building, and that's where the ministry is, because the lived faith is in all the verbs. Yes, it is true that we're trying to raise money for a building, but a building is not an end in and of itself. Buildings are always, for the church, a means to an end, a place to be called into and sent out of into the world. They only serve to increase our capacity for ministry. So they're home bases. You might think of them as like life-saving stations, just like you might build up and down the seacoast in order to protect people. The noun only matters because it provides space for the verbs to happen. That's the only reason that the noun, the building, matters. It's just a container. Our faith and our ministry is in the work that we do. So these verbs, called, gave, sent, proclaimed, healed, in the language of Luke 9, or even more simply in our own mission statement, to love, to serve, to transform, that's the work of the church. That's the work of ministry. That's the work of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.